Absolutely. Um, like she said, I'm Sandy and I'm one of the organizers here. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about Kids in Code, how to get your kids involved, and just some different opportunities to do that. Um, just so you know a little bit about me, I've been a website developer for about two years now. Um, I've been a project manager for five years and um, user of WordPress for about the same amount of time. That's actually where I started. I started at a job where um, my job was to project manage WordPress builds. So um, that's where I met up with WordPress, and we've had a great relationship ever since. Um, and I also have been a mom for 10 years. My son's actually in the back of the room hanging out. Um, and so kids are my passion. I love kids. I love hanging out with them. I love teaching them new things um, and just showing them that the world that we live in with WordPress isn't just for adults and that there's a lot that they have to offer the world as well. Um, so here's some just very general statistics, and some of them are probably not going to be anything you've never heard before. Um, one in three youth experience cyberbullying. So you may be asking me if that's the case, why am I asking kids to get involved with the cyber, the cyber world? Um, and I'll get into that in a little bit in a minute. 80% of teens are constantly on technology. So when you're looking at teenagers and preteens and just the like, um, they're already using technology. So why not provide them a tool and a resource to use it in a positive manner? And 90% of teens, surprisingly enough, um, a study was done by the American Red Cross last year that 90% of teens give in to peer pressure, positive or negative. And positive peer pressure actually is a thing. So my whole goal with my Kids Camp program is to teach young children from 7 to 14 how to properly be a positive influence in their community so that we can start to raise kids up to eliminate some of the cyberbullying that we're seeing in schools today. So what about WordPress? What can we teach kids about just the world online in general? And what is it going to allow us to do with our kids? Um, I firmly believe that if we get our kids involved in a positive manner of creating content and showing the world that kids have a voice, that they have something to say and that they matter, that we can actually build better kids. Um, and I know I use the word build a lot, but the, our theme this year is uh, Legos and building. So I, I'm trying to tie that in a little bit. Um, but the other thing we can do is we can build better writers. Um, is anybody in here a teacher? at all? Works with kids? No? Okay. Um, I'm a homeschool mom. We homeschool my son and we actually integrate WordPress into our English curriculum. So one of the things that we do is when he writes a paper and he goes through his rough draft processes, by the end his final draft has to be published. Um, and so we publish that on his blog. Um, and what that does is that shows that we don't have to write for ourselves. We don't have to write for an audience of one. We can write for others, and we can consider that audience in our writing. Now, when my son grows up, hopefully all of these steps that I'm taking him through and, and the steps that I'm teaching the kids in kids camp and taking them through will allow them to see that as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, we can build a voice and we can really see just how we can guide and direct our audience to the facts that we want them to read in a positive way. I always focus on positivity in all of these kids camps. I don't allow bullying in the room. I don't allow negative comments. If anybody says anything negative, the first thing we do is redirect back to pos how can we you know, bring this back to positivity. Um, it's all about the kids as an individual and how they're unique. Um, and I love seeing the different ideas that come up throughout the camp. Um, it's all about finding their voice as a person. A lot of people, I hear this all the time. Um, I used to be a substitute teacher, and I hear kids tell me all the time that they don't matter. They do matter, and their voice matters, and I want them to know that because we have a major problem with kids who just feel less than what they are. So what is Kids Camp? What do we do? So I'm going to walk you through our Kids Camp process. So the first question I ask the kids is, what matters to me? It's important for them to know who they are. So what's your favorite color? What do you like to do? What's your favorite subject in school? Um, do you play sports? Do you have a hobby? What's your favorite animal? And then I ask them this one question. What makes you happy? What is it that makes you happy? And we actually put these huge post-it 
sticky pads that are this big on the wall and I have a huge thing of markers and the kids get to go draw and color and um, Jean's kids have done it with me twice now. They love it. Um, but they have a lot of fun and they get to compare with other kids. And then at the end of that, they have to get up and talk about themselves. And I have found that kids are really reluctant to get up and do public speaking. But I think it's so important because at the end of the day, they need to be able to share. If they're going to be sharing their information out on the internet, and when I say information, I don't mean personal information, but you know their story on the internet, they're going to need to get over that fear of other people. So what better place than with their peers? Then I go on and we sit back down and we talk a little bit about the things we need to remember. We need to remember that we never put out our personal information on the internet. Your full name never goes on your site. Your address, your city, your school, your sports team, anything that can give anything away about you as an individual and your location never touches the internet. And I stress that. The other thing is we never take someone else's content. Copy and paste. No, it's not happening, not in this room. And I, I also emphasize that that is specifically called plagiarism because I'm finding that a lot of schools are leaving that out these days. And I have a lot of kids who have no clue what plagiarism is and that, that, that's a problem and that it's illegal. So I make sure that they understand that. And then I tie that right back into the fact that your voice matters. Your unique individual voice, you have something to say. Don't steal somebody else's because it's not you and your parents' opinion matters. Parents are in the room with us when we do kids camp, so I make sure that they're having an open conversation with their kids about their content and, and who they are, um, but I also want the kids to understand that mom and dad are the final say. This is not an opportunity to free for all on the internet and do whatever they want. It's always up to mom and dad. So now this is when we go through the steps of building our WordPress.com blog. We use WordPress.com because it's free. It's a free platform provided to, to anyone to use. You could set one up tonight. Um, and we just go through the steps. So the first thing you do is you pick a topic. And that basically narrows down what themes it's going to show them to pick from. Then you pick a layout. Are you going to have a big about page where it looks you know, kind of more businessy? Or are you going to have you know, your photographer, so you're going to have all of your pictures aligned. And then from there, we pick a theme. And it shows six to nine themes, depending on the A-B test going on at the time. Um, and then you pick a domain. And this is where I get mom and dad to help them get creative. And I always tell them to pick the free plan. If mom and dad want to upgrade them later, that's their prerogative. But we do not make, we make it so that there's no cost other than the ticket price to get in for the kids to use WordPress. They create an account with mom and dad's help because they're under 13, so they have to use a parent's email. And then we start creating posts. And we spend the rest of the day writing. And then the last hour of the day, we get up and we present our blogs and what we've written about. And I'll tell you, I have seen everything from Minecraft cheats and hacks to um, photography. And when I say photography, there are some really awesome photographers in that age group. It's amazing. Okay, so then we talk about moving beyond content. We talked about how to create content. We've gone this, over this with the kids. But there's so much more. There's classes online to learn to code. Um, these are just a, sl a, a small list. Um, there's actually a stack of paper over here that has all of these listed out. So if anybody wants to grab one, they can afterwards. Um, code Academy's free. Tinker's not. But Tinker gets into some JavaScript programming, which is really cool. Um, but that's recommended more for 7 to 14. And it has a, a mobile app that goes along with it. Um, Code Combat is not free, but it's for all ages. Code.org is free. So um, the only one that I haven't played with at all is Sylvan Learning, because they're on-site classes. I don't know if anybody has heard of Sylvan, but they're an actual tutoring facility. Um, but they, they now, at certain locations, actually offer coding classes for kids so that they can get started. And I think it revolves around building games, specifically. There's also games and toys for all different ages. Um, Play Osmo connects to an iPad, and so you actually program this little bot to move on a game board. You set up the game board, and it moves around. Um, a Cano. It's like 
uh, a Raspberry Pi, but easier to use for kids. Um, and then Lego Mindstorms is the robotics that you can program, um, and that's more 10 plus. Uh, mobile apps, these are just a couple of examples. There's a whole list on that sheet, um, but these two are for iOS, and then you've got the other two for Android, and they're very similar in how they function. So the biggest thing is get with your kids and go build something. Thank you. Do you guys have any questions? Yes. It's not so much the challenging part to get started, it's the challenging part to keep them from giving up. Um, because they're so, all of these programs are built around gamification and you know, earning points and beating this level. And so you're learning in a fun environment, but I've noticed that even in those fun environments, the kids go, well, am I really learning anything? Because they're learning logic and they don't realize that they're actually learning code and they want to go from zero to having a full built game and they don't understand that there's this path you have to take to get there. So we need to learn how to think like a developer, then we can learn to code like a developer and then we can have a project that we actually complete. So it's a matter of educating them and, and kind of steering them. And um, I relate it directly to learning a musical instrument. You know, you learn the theory, you practice a lot, and then you can potentially even compose later on, but, but you've got to get there. You can't go from uh, nothing to a concert violin player overnight. It's, you know, it's not going to happen that way. So just it's a matter of encouraging them is the hardest part, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes? Uh, liability. Um, I, I'm a certified substitute teacher in Seminole County. Our camp is not in Seminole County. I'm not under the umbrella of that. I have been fingerprinted and background checked, but my other helpers have not necessarily been. Um, so for liability reasons. The other reason is I think it's very, very important from day one when you get started for it to be a symbiotic relationship between parent and child in their internet path. Um, if you're not with your child online, and I don't mean sitting behind them staring at every last you know, keystroke, but if you're not really talking about it constantly, you open up the door for bullying, you open up the door for um, predators, you open up the door for all of this really scary stuff that as kids, they really don't need to be dealing with that. They need to be kids. Um, and so that's kind of our job as parents is to weed all of that out for them so that they can really just learn and, and grow. So, yeah, John. Um, you know, I think it depends on the instructor, honestly, um, and what the in how the instructor feels. Um, I know that there have been a lot of instructors that I've talked to or teachers that I've talked to that would have no desire um, to do that because they would be afraid they would break something. Um, everything they do that should be graded in theory should be on the front end in, in the end. So I don't necessarily know that they would need access. But really, that would come down to you and the instructor and coming up with what's, what you both together feel is best. Mm -hmm. I, when we set up these sites, we turn off comments. Um, comments at that age is dangerous, I feel. Um, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to change the mindset and trying to put this positive outlook out there. And if you start getting negative comments, which happens from adults of all people, um, you know, it's one of those things where you just want to, in the beginning, kind of lay a nice level, even playing field and not have to worry so much about negative feedback, um, especially when it's a tool to learn. 
as opposed to a blog. Um, I really drive that point home. Like this isn't a blog. This isn't a free for all. This is supposed to be used, at least in our environment, it's supposed to be used as a, an educational tool. So, yeah. Questions, comments, thoughts? Good, awesome. Thanks guys. Um, like I said, there's the, the resource paper on, on the one side is the resources and on the other side is a safety tip sheet for kids and blogging. <laughs>